Hi and welcome to this first introduction video on a series related to textual analysis. Here we will learn how to open, read and get the content of a PDF file to be able to analyze the text in it. I know we have left the previous series, especially the one related to the simulation of evaluation models unfinished, but I would really like to start uh, slowly going into the world of textual analysis since the main reason I started learning Python was to do textual analysis both for personal and uh, professional reasons. I promise I will continue other series in parallel. Since this is the first video on textual analysis, and I suspect many of you are not familiar with it, let me spend some time explaining what it is and some of its applications. So, what is textual analysis? As the name stands, textual analysis is about reading, understanding, and making inference about the content of a text. Thanks to new technologies, we are recording vast quantities of information in the text format. But these textual data are not typically structured nicely, so we cannot simply start using it in a statistical analysis and so on. Think of all emails, tweets, interviews, conference calls, company filing, and I can go on and on. There are tons of important insights and information in all these unstructured text and imagine what if we could write code so that it goes and read all those textual data and bring us what we ask for. And to be clear, I am not talking about just going and finding some words or phrases, uh, although this could be uh, one first step, of course. But ultimately, uh, we want to write programs that is trained, so uh, it gives us much more than finding a few specific words. We want the program to do the work for us. For example, uh, we want to write programs that can read in real time millions of tweets, uh, select the ones that are related to a subject we are interested in, and for example, infer the positive or negative sentiments in uh, those tweets. In finance, for example, we could analyze text uh, from financial news, social media, and uh, company filings to predict stock price movements. And then as a resource, we could use textual analysis to build investment strategies based on these textual data from company filings, news, and tweets, and so on, to generate higher returns for our investments. In fact, as a general rule, trying to analyze anything that is easily accessible and interpretable, like the accounting data, earnings, profits, and so on, cannot have huge value added for the sake of trading strategies, since everybody has an easy access to those data and we have little disagreement on what they mean. This is in sharp contrast with unstructured text data, which are not easily accessible, well, since you need to know textual analysis, of course, but also they are typically not black and white, and therefore we need to understand the context very well to be able to develop some techniques to infer some insights from the text and decides to buy or sell a stock, for example. The statistical methods that are used to analyze text are similar uh, as those uh, used in machine learning. Okay, as you know, I love uh, learning by doing projects, so instead of introducing textual analysis via all the formula and crazy techniques and procedures we have to perform while doing textual analysis, I start with an actual project that I have personally been very interested to do for a long time. And through this project, we get used to different aspects of a simple textual analysis. The project is related to my teaching evaluation files I receive every year. At the end of each course in each year, students evaluate the course and the only part of the evaluation forms that is really used and traced is the score that the student give to the professor, which is essentially the answer to a question like, what is uh, your overall degree of satisfaction with the pedagogy of the professor? 
And the students can give a ranking from, uh, say, one to five. And the funny thing is that uh, in some, some schools, uh, one is the best, sometimes five is the best. And that, of course, uh, you can imagine creates some issues. And every year I have students sending me emails that they mistakenly gave me one extreme number instead of the other extreme they were thinking of. Uh, which, of course, could change the average score uh, quite a lot, uh, which is also a shortcoming of using only score, uh, as I will discuss later on. Okay? In any case, such scores do convey some information, but I believe they lack the most important information. I personally spend not more than three seconds to look at the score, and then I go down to the comment section, where the actual and proper information is. I spend a lot of time to read all those comments one by one to learn why someone hated me uh, or my course and what are the aspects my students liked about me or my course, if uh, any. Okay, as you see, at least my students hate me enough uh, to bother themselves and write so many comments in the evaluation forms. These, of course, include extremely useful information that cannot be understood by looking at the score. But the problem is that they are not in a structured format, so we may be tempted to ignore them. Even if we read them, we forget about them, and it's hard to keep track of those uh, developments uh, through time. But the score is a grade, and uh, we can all trace it and write the score for each year and each course easily in our CV, for example. Again, the issue with the score is that it has limited information in it. Okay, and I'm telling this since this has broader implication way above and beyond teaching evaluation. I'm using this just as an example. The same applies to customer reviews, for example. If you are a company, a lot of times you really want to understand what your customers think of you and your products and not uh, just the score they give you. Not all high scores mean really the same. Sometimes the customer just liked your product and gave you a high score, and sometimes she loved it and had tons of good experience and gave you perhaps the same high score. But these two high scores are very different, and you should know it as a company and to use those insights provided to you by the second customer. Perhaps even more importantly is when someone hates you and give you a very low score on product review. You need to know why she hates you. Is it that the customer gave you a super low score because the product was bad, because the service was bad, because the price was too high or because she was just not in a good mood and clicked the lowest score without even writing any comments. Analyzing the content of those comments then would become a crucial part of the task you should be loving to do for the company. Okay, I think this is enough and I hope you have a flavor of why textual analysis is very important and some potential applications of it. Now, as I mentioned before, in the first few videos on this series, I would like to use Python to read the comments in my evaluation forms and analyze them for me so I understand at least the overall comments without going to actually open the files and read those comments. Let's do the first step in this video. Since I received my evaluation forms in a PDF file, the first step would be to learn how to read a PDF file and being able to work with it in Python. This is super important to learn since many of the documents we may be using are in PDF formats. To work with a PDF file in Python, one super nice library is PyPDF2. You need to install this first by going to the command prompt or terminal and write pip install py pdf2. Here I have it already in my computer installed, so I don't need to install it. After installing it, we import py pdf2 as p2, and p2 is just for simplicity so that we refer to this as p2 in the script rather than writing each time py pdf2. Now, we first try to open and read the PDF file. 
opening is done by writing open and then passing the name of the file and my PDF file called uh, Evaluation Advanced Corporate 2020 is uh, the most recent evaluation form for my favorite course. Anyways, let's not get distracted. Remember that I don't have the full path for the file since the PDF file is in my current directory where these codes are also stored. If not, you need the full path for the PDF file here, but in any case, we always need the extension, which in here, the extension is of course a PDF. Then we should define what the mode would be. Now we will have to say uh, RB, which is about reading the file. While you are here on this line, if you press Shift Tab, you will get the information about possible options. As you see, there are many different types of modes like opening for reading, uh, writing, and so on. Okay. So let's uh, call this uh, file. Now uh, that we open the file and called it file, we can use pypdf2 and its attribute PDF file reader and then pass the file. So we want to read this file. And let's call this PDF underline file. So this PDF underline file is the outcome of the reading of the original evaluation form in PDF I had. Now, I can work with this PDF underline file and extract from it what I would like to have. If you write PDF underline file dot and then tab, it gives you all sorts of things you could use to extract information from this file. One very useful one is uh, how many pages does this file have? This can easily be done by applying the method numPages to the PDF underline file. Let's run this. So it tells us that there are 10 pages in this file. Let's go and double check to make sure that it's not fooling us. Yes, indeed the file is 10 pages uh, long as you can see. Another important information we might be interested to extract is the content of some pages. Here, the comments in text always start from the second page. So let's try to get the text of one of those uh, comments pages. The beauty of Python is that if you know English a little, you can a lot of times uh, guess what to write. In this case, to get the page, we would need to apply get page and pass the page number. We need to remember that in Python, always things start from zero. So the first page would be page zero. If I want the second page, then I should pass one. So this is my page object and let's call it page uh, object. Now I can extract the text by, can you guess? Can you guess what I should do here? I can extract the text by, exactly, by applying extract text. Simple, huh? And let's call it text. I can print the text to see the content of this second page. Okay, let's double check again to make sure things are fine. It starts by, I particularly appreciated comments and then Thank you, Amit, for your enthusiasm. And if I check the original file, yes, it's, it's correct. Now, let's also check the end of the text here. It ends with, uh, thank you uh, very much for your implication by the, and then the date and hour and page number. Okay, let's go and see if this is also correct. And indeed, it's also uh, correct. And of course, I can just change the page number and get the content of other pages if I want it. So now we learn the first step on how to access the content of a PDF file. In the next videos, we will learn how to analyze this text data and extract the information I am interested in 
from these comments. Of course, this will be a warm-up project and later on we will work with other types of files and data like the text from company filings, newspaper articles and so on. I hope you found this video a useful introduction to start learning a textual analysis. If you like our videos and uh, would like to be informed about the next videos, please do not forget to subscribe to the channel by pressing the subscribe button below. Thanks for watching and we will be back soon to continue this and other projects.